Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode with your girl, Audrey Connor Gibson. <laughs> and happy days to you. Hopefully, everyone is doing all right, and you're trying to survive as best as you can. So, but we're going to continue on working on those monomials, but we're going to do something a little sassy. We're going to divide things up. So, if you're ready, let's get set to get going. All right, everyone, and let's get started. So as promised, we are going to be working on dividing monomials. So last time we did multiplying monomials, now we're gonna divide some monomials. And we're still gonna be working on that common core standards of A, A, P, R, point one. So let's do that quick review that we did last time, that exit ticket. So we had negative three X squared times two X cubed raised to the third power. And I did mention, are we raising everything to the third power? No, we are not. So this first parenthesis is gonna be exactly the same, but the second parenthesis, everything inside that parenthesis is being raised to this third power. So that's telling me that the two is being raised to the third power. And also that X cubed, yep, that's being raised to the third power. So two cubed or two to the third power is the same as saying two, times two times two. And two times two gives me four, and four times two gives me eight. So now we have that x to the third power being raised to the third power. That means we have x to the ninth power. So if you recall, it's basically saying that x to the third power, that's being multiplied to itself three times. So if I add my exponents, three plus three gives me six, six plus three gives me nine. That's where that x to the ninth power comes from. So as we did all that to that second parenthesis, guess what? Everything from this first parenthesis is just coming on down. So we have this negative three and we have this x squared and we are multiplying. So that means that negative three times eight, that gives me my negative 24 because we multiplied the coefficients. And then we have this x squared times x to the ninth. Since we're multiplying, we are going to add those exponents, which gives me an exponent of 11. So my final answer in this case was negative 24 x to the 11. So hopefully you got that one. If you did, high five, boom, get it, bump, fist bump, all that fun stuff. If you didn't get it, you're like, okay, where did you go wrong? And if you see like, oh, I forgot to raise two to the third power. So that's where I got my negative six from. Now that you know, now that you see it, hopefully we're making that tweak and that correction. Okay, so today's learning target, as promised, we are going to divide those monomials. So as usual, we're gonna be looking at guided notes, some examples, and also do some practice problems before we finish up with the exit ticket. So couple helpful hints. So when you're dividing monomials, you're gonna divide the coefficients. So just like normal, if I had like 10 over five, you're just gonna divide that to give me my answer of two. But when you divide the variables, okay, when you're dividing those exponents, you're actually going to be subtracting the exponents. So this part right here, you're gonna be subtracting those exponents and make sure that they have those like terms. Now, there's going to be times that we might have to, after we divide, see if we can simplify a little bit more, only if that's needed, all right? So remember, if you see an exponent that does not, or you see a variable that does not have an exponent, we always assume that gives us one, all right? It's to the first power. And then please, let's remember those laws of exponents. So if you're not, hey, remember, we did a video on that early on. Just look in my playlist, and then you can see that video for yourself, just as a refresher, okay? So we got like four examples today, all right? So for the first one, we have in my numerator, 10x cubed, y cubed, divided by 2x squared, y, okay? So we're actually going to split these things up. So if I have 10 over 2, that'll be 1. Then we have x to the third over x squared. And then you have y to the third 
over y. So sometimes splitting it up kind of helps you to see it a lot better. So now we have 10 divided by two. So we all know that's gonna give me a whopping number of five. So now when we come down here, I have x to the third power. That's the same as me saying x being multiplied of that base three times, okay? Then I have x to the second power. So that's the same as me saying x is being multiplied by itself two times. Now, when I divide, it's almost like I'm trying to find matching. So I see one group of matching, one group of matching. So if I eliminate that group and I eliminate that group, how many x's are left? So you should be saying one. So there's one x that's left. So I can write it out like this, if I, or I could just say subtraction. What's three minus two? It's always the numerator minus the denominator. That's how we're thinking, okay? So if I have three items up top and I take two items away, how many of those items are left? In this case, it's gonna be one and it's one x. So the same thing can happen with the y. So I have y to the third power, so that's y times itself three times, and then I have one y. So if I group these, they're gonna cancel out. They're gonna give me a big whopping one. How many y's are left? I have two of them. So that's why it's gonna be y squared. So my answer for that original expression is going to be 5xy squared, okay? So it's always easy to remember when you do the subtraction, when you're dividing, you're going to subtract your exponents, okay? It goes numerator, then denominator, all right? So let's try for the second one. A little challenging because you're probably like, where, where, where's the coefficients? So if you don't see a coefficient, we always assume that it's a 1. But now, look at my numerator. I have to raise all of this to the fourth power. So if we took the shortcut that we learned from last time, that means I can multiply my exponents by this four. So that means this is gonna be a to the 16th. This will be b to the 28th, okay? So they're telling me that I'm multiplying a to the fourth. I'm gonna write that out over here. I'm multiplying this a to the fourth to itself four times, okay? And then I'm multiplying this a to the seventh to itself four times. And then when I add my exponents, I got four, eight, 12, 16. And then I have seven, 14, 21, 28. That's how, oh, sorry, there weren't A's, there were supposed to be B's. Oops. But hopefully you get the gist. We'll make them B's. Got so excited. <laughs> so we'll make them B's. But you know what I'm talking about. So you're basically, instead of writing it out in that extended form, you could just simply just multiply the exponents. All right? So now that's what we got for our numerator. Now, we're gonna just bring over our denominators. And you notice that I'm only doing like terms. The ones, though my A's go with my A's, my B's go with my B's. So since I'm dividing these two, I'm really subtracting. So what's 16 minus eight? That will give me eight. And then what's 28 minus seven? That will give me 21. So my solution for this will be eight to the eighth power, b to the 21st power, okay? So I just basically took a combination of two things. So now let's take a look at this one. We have negative 12 x squared y to the fifth divided by three x to the fourth y to the fourth. So again, we're going to divide my coefficients. So negative 12 divided by three, that gives me a negative four. So now we have x to the second divided by x to the fourth. Hmm, if I write that out, that means I have two x's in my numerator, but I have four x's in my denominator. 
So if I pair them up and cancel them out, how many X's are left? And you're probably saying, well, it's two. Awesome. But where are those two X's? Are they in the numerator or in the denominator? They're in the denominator. So guess what? They got to stay in the denominator. And you're probably going to say, well, wait, hold on. Because we didn't do that over here. But actually, we did. When we look at this x to the third, so take a look here. When we did the x to the third over x squared, we have our three x's there on top, right? Two x's on the, on the denominator. And we had one x left that was in the numerator. So remember, if I have a whole number, it's always over one. So if we have it in the numerator, it's gonna stay just like it is. We don't have to put it in a fraction form. But in this case, we have to put it in a fraction form because how many X's that are left over, they're in the denominator, okay? So if I look at my Y's, I got Y to the fifth, Y to the fourth. If I subtract, I have one Y left, but where is that Y? That Y should be in the numerator. Because if I had five Y's over four Y's, when they cancel out, I have one Y left, but that's in the numerator. Guess what? This is my solution. So it's going to be negative four Y over X squared. I know that was a little tongue twister, a little mind twister right there. But as long as we understand where and what position, you always want to go, and here's kind of a secret, you always want to go with your highest degree. Okay, so like when we look at these X's, I know I'm going to subtract, but instead of me dealing with negative exponents, because that's what's going to happen, you just automatically put your answer where your highest degree was. So in this case, my highest degree with the X's was in the denominator. So I'm going to put my answer of X squared in the denominator. All right. So let's try it again with the, for the next one. So we have 20 divided by negative 5. So that gives me negative 4. Then we have A to the third divided by A to the third. Guess what? If I wrote my A's out and they both have the same amount, are there any A's left over? No. So I don't have to put an A down because there's none left over, okay? So A's do what we call kind of like cancel each other out because they're going to give me a solution of one, okay? So now I'm looking at my C's. I have C to the fourth over C to the fifth. So there's four C's up top. There's five C's. Oh, drop my pen five C's down below. So how many C's are left when you do your subtraction? Sorry, I gotta look. <laughs> so you know this is real life, <laughs> real life stuff. So how many C's are left when you subtract? There's gonna be one C left. And where is that C? In the denominator. Okay, so now we're doing with our D's. We got D to the second, but are there any more D's here? Nope. So if I can't break it down, I'm going to bring it down. So my answer is going to be negative 4 d squared over c. This one looked a little more neater. <laughs> All right. So when you are dividing, you're actually subtracting your exponents. Okay. So if you want to do this process of elimination like we did over here, go ahead. Knock yourselves out. But I know if you're going to be taking a timed test, SATs, ACTs, Accuplacer, um, maybe ASVAT, you're not going to have too much time per question. You probably have like mostly, absolute most, like two minutes per question. So it's like kind of good to know a lot of these properties before you go and take those assessments, okay? So now we're going to practice. I just got two problems just to do some practice on. So if anything, take a pause, try to do it, and then click me back on so we can keep going, okay? 
All right, so we have 24 m squared n third, m to the third, over 8 m n to the fifth. So we're going to divide the 24 and the 8, which gives me 3. You have 2 m's in the numerator, 1 m in the denominator. If I cancel out, how many m's do I have left? I have 1 m, and that's going to be in that numerator. So for my n's, I have three n's in the numerator. I have five n's in the denominator. After I cancel out, how many n's do I have left? I have two left, but where are they? They're in my denominator. So this is my solution, 3m over n squared. So for number two, again, divide the coefficients, subtract the exponents, all right? So 36 divided by 9 gives me 4. But take a look at your bases. We have x, y, z. We have a, b, c. Do we have any like terms? Nope. So guess what? I'm just going to write it down. Because remember, if I can't break it down, I'm going to bring it down. This is your answer. And you're probably saying, well, why does the four get to go in the numerator? 36 is larger than my nine. So that's gonna give me four over one. If I wanted to reduce this, I could reduce the 36 by nine, which gives me four. I could reduce the nine by nine, which gives me one. So there really could be a one in my denominator if you want to, but remember, if you don't see it, it's assumed that it's there, okay? All right, so that was today's lesson. So do you think you can divide monomials? I think so. Maybe a little extra practice. Maybe you had to review what we did with the properties of exponents. That's perfectly fine. Everybody needs a refresher. I don't know why anybody else is different, okay? But we definitely reviewed the exit ticket from last time, which was our multiplying the monomials. We already looked at our guided notes examples, and we did some practice. So now we're going to go for that exit ticket. So for today's exit ticket, just one problem. So we have negative 24x to the fourth, y to the seventh, over negative 8x cubed, y to the ninth. So give it a try, and let's see how you do. So just like we said before, whatever we do on this channel, the very next video, I'm going to walk through step by step, just like how I did with the multiplying today. I'll walk you through step by step to see if you're on the right track, all right? So if you're new to this channel, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. If you're not new and you're just old hat, hey, guess what? I'm so glad that you came here as well because you're going to easily just be like, meh, I don't feel like doing that today. But I'm really glad that you came. I'm really glad you want to view. If you like this, go ahead and hit the like button. And if you want to know when the next video is going to come out, go ahead and hit subscribe. And like always, if you have a question with anything, hit the comment. I mean, I think everything is going pretty well. So hopefully we're going to keep this going, all right? So happy, <laughs> I can't even talk anymore because I'm so excited. Okay, so hopefully everything is going all right and everyone is doing just well. You're staying healthy, you're staying hydrated, and I'm glad that you're here by staying educated. How awesome are you? So I can't wait to see you for the next time and take care.